Now, a 10-dimensional universe, really. And I'll show you where that was first discovered, and it wasn't in the scientific laboratory. 10-dimensional universe. And we, when we get to read the Bible, we discover that the most of what we know about the creation is after Genesis 3. We know very little about the creation prior to Genesis 3. Why? Because in Genesis 3, we have the fall of Adam, and as a result, God announces a curse. And there is a view, prevalent among some scholars, that, if you, that when he announced that curse, it fractured ca- the creation into two parts. Uh, from, uh, they took the ten dimensions and split it into four plus six. Those four dimensions that you and I experience, l- the three spatial dimensions in time, we call the physical universe. This podium, whatever, we think that w- that's part of, of a four-dimensional environment. Three spatial dimensions and time. These other six dimensions we glibly relegate to the spiritual universe. And it may be that that's really synonymous, or effectively synonymous, with the six dimensions that are not directly accessible to us. And, uh, but they are the uh, target of study by our particle physicists. And I'm sure you'd be amazed at what's being spent to, go, to understand that. And so the idea that this, is the, this, this partitioning is an effect of the fall, uh, uh, the curse in Genesis 3, it, in, it introduces a concept in mathematics called entropy or randomness. And uh, in, Ro- in Romans chapter 8, verse 21, it speaks of the bondage of ca- the decay, that the creation is subject to the bondage of decay, and it associates that with the curse. So there's some of us that are interested in physics that suspect, we obviously don't know, but we suspect that the concept of entropy was introduced as part of the Genesis 3. And uh, the universe was fractured then, in a sense, the separation of the four and six dimensions. That separates what we call the physical and the spiritual world. Those are metaphors reign <laughs> where s- mysteries reside. Redemption in the Bible, by the way, involves more than man alone. We're, very, we're overwhelmed as we realize the extremes God, ha- God has gone to to rename mankind. What we overlook is that all through the Bible it points out that there's more at stake than just us because we know that there'll be a new heavens and a new earth in both Isaiah 65 and 66 and, of course, in Revelation 21. So there's more going on than just the repair or re- replacement of us as individuals. It's the universe itself. So.